We will now proceed to the conferring of an honorary degree. The recipient will be presented by the University Orator, Dr. Gordon Mason. Graham Farquharson to be Doctor of Science. Graham Farquharson has made his name as one of Canada's leading mining engineers. Born in Timmins, Ontario and raised in Bathurst, New Brunswick, Graham attended UNB for three years and during that time he played varsity hockey. He then transferred to the University of Alberta to obtain a Bachelor of Science degree in mining engineering. After working in Uganda and Namibia, he returned to Canada and earned an MBA from Queen's University. In 1974, he co-founded Strathcona Mineral Services, and over 35 years later, he still serves as president, overseeing hundreds of assignments as far as field as Kyrgyzstan, Mongolia, Africa, and Central and South America. A key development in Strathcona's history was the Nanisivik zinc mine in Baffin Island, 700 kilometers north of the Arctic Circle. This was Canada's first mine in the Arctic, and the challenges were daunting. Bone-chilling temperatures, long dark nights, permafrost, and sea ice. Nevertheless, it operated successfully for 22 years, producing up to 800,000 tons per year as one of the lower cost zinc mines in the world. The company worked to ensure the indigenous peoples benefited from the project, and in fact, operated it in three languages, English, French, and Inuktitut. In 1995, Briex Minerals of Calgary announced the discovery of the single largest gold deposit in history at its operation in Busan, Indonesia. Strathcona Minerals conducted an audit and determined that it was, in fact, the single largest fraud in the history of mining. This added to the high regard in which Graham was already held, and in the years since, he has been frequently called upon as an expert witness in court cases involving mining industry standards and mine valuations. He was chairman of an independent committee appointed by the Supreme Court of Ontario to oversee operations of the Page Williams mine while the ownership was in dispute. In 1996, Graham received the J.C. Spruill Memorial Plaque for pioneering Arctic mining development. The Canadian Institute of Mining and Metallurgy also named him its distinguished lecturer in 1998, and in the same year gave him the Robert Elver Mineral Economics Award. The culmination of this distinguished record was Graham's induction into the Canadian Mining Hall of Fame last year. He was then immediately asked to serve on the board's selection committee. Graham Farquharson is a generous philanthropist. He has supported UNB Athletics and the Chair in Economic Geology in the Department of Geology, recently named the Department of Earth Sciences. He volunteers as Chairman of the Canadian Mineral Industry Education Foundation, which is supported in part by a substantial donation from Strathcona Minerals. He has given millions of dollars for kidney cancer research, including research chairs at the University of Toronto, the Princess Margaret Hospital, and Sunnybrook Hospital, the latter in honor of his wife, Annalisa. As an engineer, entrepreneur, philanthropist, and loyal alumnus, Graham is a worthy example for current and future UNB students, and we are very pleased to honor him today. Insignissime Prices, Amplissima Cancellari, Tota Universitas, Presenta Wobis, Graham Farquharson, Ud Admitator Honoris Causa, Ad Gradum Doctoris in Scientia, in Hoc Universitate. Ego Admitteo Te, Graham Farquharson, Honoris Causa, Ad Gradum Doctoris in Scientia, in Universitate Novi Brunswicki.
It is now my uh, privilege and great pleasure to invite Dr. Graham Farquharson to address this in senior. Dr. Farquharson. <clears throat> Bonjour and good morning. After an absence of almost 50 years, here we are today back at UNB with the pleasant task of saying a few words to the 2011 graduates in the faculties of nursing and science. And I'm not going to try and give the graduates advice on what they should be doing in the world. Dr. Curry has already done that job and done it very well. And besides, you are now university graduates. You have been trained to make your own decisions. I'm going to make, concentrate my few words on the beginning of my association with New Brunswick and with UNB and the subsequent events in my life from which I have derived the most satisfaction. And perhaps you might get a few ideas from those comments for your, <coughs> for your own future. In 1952, we arrived in Bathurst. And on October 25th of that year, my father called somebody important in Toronto to say that their expiration drill was stuck in some high-grade lead zinc ore. Six days later, Brunswick Mining and Smelting Corporation was formed. And today, almost 60 years after that discovery drill hole, the Brunswick lead zinc mine is still operating and has been the most important economic development in the history of the North Shore of New Brunswick. Shortly after we arrived in Bathurst, when I was 12 years old, my father told me I had to get a job. So I did, 60 hours a week working in the lumber yards for $20. And my father took half of that for room and board. Modern-day parents might say that was a bit rough on a 12-year-old, but paying room and board at an early age was one of the best things that ever happened to me because it, <clears throat> it created in me the determination to be my own, own boss and, <clears throat> and look after my own destiny. In 1957, I graduated from Bathurst High School and eventually came to UNB in 1959. In May 1960, I was on the highway outside of Fredericton with my thumb out, hitchhiking to my first job in the mining industry at a copper mine on the north coast of Newfoundland, where the wage rate was a dollar an hour. Fifty-one years later, I've been fortunate to have had a wonderful career and life associated with the mining industry and have worked all over the world. Two highlights from that career had a lot to do with my induction last year into the Canadian Mining Hall of Fame, and they were briefly commented upon in my introduction. In 1972, we put together the concept of developing the first mine in Canada in the High Arctic, a zinc project at Nana Civic on the north end of Baffin Island, 700 kilometers north of the Arctic Circle. The sun goes down in mid-November, and doesn't come up again until mid-February, three months later. For the project, we needed the equivalent of what today would be a few hundred million dollars. Mining companies in Canada and the U.S. listened to this 32-year-old young man <clears throat> when I was knocking on their door trying to get financing for their project, and they said, it can't be done. You're dreaming. Well, we did it. And for 30 years, Nana Civic was the main economic uh, endeavor in the new territory of Nunavut, just as the Brunswick mine has been the main economic activity in northern New Brunswick for the last 60 years. And that was the achievement in my career from which I derived the most satisfaction, because we did something that so many said could not be done, and in so doing made it possible for hundreds of families to have had the unique experience of living and working in the high Arctic. 
From 1993 to 1997, Briex Minerals was the big story on the Toronto Stock Exchange, as their gold property in Borneo and in Indonesia kept getting more valuable with each drill hole. And by March 1997, the company had a stock market value of $6 billion. A big U.S. company drilled a hole and advised Briex that they did not get the same gold values that Briex did. We were soon on our way to Indonesia and quickly spotted many red flags before even going to the property. A decision had to be made. Should we take the safe, conservative route of going to the property and drilling our own holes and then reporting to the world on what we had found? Or should we send out an alert now before the widows and others bought more Briex stock? I made that telephone call right away and $6 billion in shareholder value was gone. The biggest monetary decision in my career, but not a difficult one, as long as one follows the principle to tell it like it is. And in this case, that meant saying that there probably wasn't any gold on the Briex property. I enjoyed my three years at UNB from 1959 to 1962. In the last year, I was lucky to be on the UNB hockey team that won the Maritime Championship. And Cinevex was always the team to beat in those days. Bill McGilvery, Richard Clark, and Dave Inch were much more important co contributors to the team than I was. And I enjoyed yesterday the opportunity to have some time with Richard Pooch Clark to reminisce about those days. It is 49 years since leaving UNB in May 1962 without a university diploma to hitchhike to another summer job at a mine. Now I have a university diploma from UNB and have also entered that stage in life where satisfaction comes from distributing that which we have managed to accumulate. Thus it is with great pleasure that we can advise the two million dollars will be coming to UNB, and that amount will be split into four equal parts. One part will go to the geology department, and it's a shame that Arnie McAllister passed away last year because he was the <coughs> first prophet that I had in geology, and he was an inspiration to all of his students. Another part of the donation will go to the Faculty of Science that is so well represented here today particularly by the students in biology and biochemistry. The third part is to go to the Faculty of Nursing. As yesterday, I had some time with Dean Janice Thompson to learn more about the nursing program. Because my wife had such a long battle with kidney cancer, I have spent a lot of time becoming conversant with certain areas of medical science and of great admiration for those who embark upon a career in nursing and medicine and have had great satisfaction from being the largest supporter of kidney cancer research in Canada and observing the small steps of progress that have been made in treating that difficult disease. The final half million of that donation we will simply leave to Eddie Campbell to allocate wherever he thinks it can best be used. To those of you who join me today in leaving UNB, To those of you who join me today in leaving UNB with our diplomas, we wish you all the best and may you enjoy your careers as much as I have. You come from a special part of Canada, the best country in the world, and many of you have that wonderful advantage <coughs> of being able to, to be comfortable in both of our official languages, which I have found to be a great advantage. Merci beaucoup. Et bonne chance à tout le monde.